Hi everybody and welcome to today's review. Today I am reviewing a pen from Estabrook um, and this is the new Camden fountain pen. This is a really uh, interesting pen. There's nothing particularly sort of revolutionary about it. Uh, it's the third pen from Estabrook, uh, following the SD and the Phaeton. Um, now, I don't have the packaging with me right now, but you can check out the uh, uh, initial video I posted where I show some of the packaging, which I'll link uh, down below here. Um, but this is an interesting pen because it's a um, uh, it's a an anodized aluminium body uh, and it's got you know sort of a number six nib and it writes well uh, and it's from Estabrook who and you know is a relatively new uh, pen brand back on the market uh, it's interesting to see sort of what they're producing and how they're finding their feet so let's talk about the pen we'll show the parts and all that sort of stuff I'll do a writing sample and then we can talk a little bit about what I like and what I don't like so as I said this is the Estabrook Camden. Now this comes in three finishes. So it comes in a rose, which is sort of like a rose goldy sort of champagne-y sort of color. Uh, silver, and then this which is the graphite black. It is a standard international cartridge converter pen. As you can see there, it's a screw cap um, and it screws off in just around one turn. And it's got a nice sort of cushioned cap which allow, helps in sealing the nib uh, creating a nice airtight seal uh, so that the pen will not dry out. So as I said, this is a standard international cartridge converter pen. Comes with a cartridge and a converter and the cartridge is branded. It's one of only two places on the pen where we see the branding. Uh, the other, of course, is here on the cap uh, where we get Estabrook and then sort of this white line around the end of the cap. We also get sort of the logo on the top there. There's nothing on the end. Um, it's just basically a plain black anodized aluminium. It's brushed, so it's got a nice sort of uh, visual texture to it, but you can't really feel that other than the fact that it feels like it's slightly matte. The section is plastic, so it does feel different to the rest of the pen, uh, and it's got a nice little flare there, even though it's not a particularly wide section. The nib is a steel Schmidt nib. I have here the medium, uh, which works well for me. Um, as I said, it's so this cushion cap, which is great for sort of protecting the pen, uh, the nib from drying out, uh, does take a little bit sort of of, you do have to actually push it in as you screw it, otherwise it just sort of revolves on itself. Um, uh, they also had that on the SD model, and there are a couple other brands such as Fine Writing International who uh, have that sort of same sort of cushioned cap seal mechanism. So, uh, the, as I said, the nib is a, uh, is a Schmidt steel nib, and uh, most retailers stock it in fine, medium, and broad. Uh, it has a plain plastic feed, which um, if we like, if we have a quick look at there. Um, nothing particularly exciting, but the pen does write quite well. Um, chrome trim just on the cap there the clip there it's a relatively sort of stiff clip but not so stiff that you couldn't use it and it would certainly hold things sort of nice and tight uh, the pen is a fairly sort of standard shape it swells from the uh, cap from the tip, top of the cap to the band and then sort of tapers down towards sort of the uh, end there as I said, it's a screw cap. They're not sharp threads and the step down while there is minimal. But the pen is of such a good size that if you hold it, it's actually not gonna be sort of uncomfortable and you don't necessarily feel those threads uh, under your fingers. It's a good size unposted. You can post this pen. It does become a little bit long and the balance does shift towards the back of the pen because half the weight of the actual pen is in the cap with this model. So the pen weighs 36 grams, uh, 18 in the cap and 18 in the body. So yes, very much uh, a, a top heavy pen if you decide to post it. We'll get into the measurements in just a second. Now, this is called the Camden. Camden is a town in New Jersey, uh, which is where Estherbrook was founded. So they have named the pen after that town, which I think is a nice touch. It's a classic sort of looking design. It's not, I wouldn't say it's vintage by any stretch, but it's got a nice um, modern flair to it as well. Uh, so Estherbrook 
doing interesting things in my opinion. Let's now uh, look at the pen uh, in comparison to a couple of other pens and then we'll talk about some uh, sizes. So the two pens I am showing it alongside today are the Twisby Eco because it's a fairly sort of standard pen on the market these days um, and the Lamy 2000 here so which I am showing you alongside because it's another sort of black brushed uh, material um, and it, you can see it's not a small pen by any stretch of the imagination which I quite like so the dimensions of the pen um, uncapped like this it's 150 millimeters when you um, the body unposted uh, is about 130 but if you post it it does become quite a long 170 but as I said it does back weight quite easily the section is 9.8 millimeters there in the middle so not overly uh, it's not a narrow section but it is not a it's not a girthy section by any stretch so let's do some writing and then we'll come back and we'll talk about a few uh, features, uh, a few pros and cons and such. So let's do a writing sample. What we have here is the Estabrook Camden fountain pen. It is a um, steel Schmidt uh, medium nib um, and as you can see it lays down a fairly decent line there are a couple of spots where it sort of skips a little bit uh, which is a little bit disappointing from a nib like this it does normally write fairly well they are uh, rare and it may be something to do with the slight different angle that I'm writing on here um, but the pen does perform uh, pretty well and reliably. It's like it's not a perfect writer, but you know, it lays down a nice patch of ink um, and certainly not a dry writer by any stretch either uh, so you can see you know there are a couple of little hard starts as i've said but for the most part it writes fairly well it's a stiff nib um so you're not going to get like heaps of line variation and I'm, with these sort of steel nibs you are likely to sort of push them beyond their limits fairly quickly um reverse writing It's a bit scratchy, it's a very fine, very light line. Not necessarily the best pen uh, for that purpose, but you know, it does the job. So there's a couple of things I wanna say quickly about this pen. Firstly, this pen for me falls into a category of what I would consider everyday writers. Now, that doesn't mean to say that there are uh, better pens out on the market, or that there aren't better pens out on the market, there are. Um, for me, I think something like the Lamy 2000 is the perfect everyday writing pen. But at this price point, um, with this sort of mat strong material, the fact that it's a good size and a fairly reliable, decent nib, for me, it actually makes it a fairly good everyday writing pen. I can write with this pen for hours without having to think at all. Uh, it doesn't, you know, there's, it, ink starvation doesn't seem to be an issue. The hard starts and the skips are very rare. We've got a couple of them here, but they are very rare. Oh, by the way, this is Waterman uh, Serenity Blue Ink. I'll just quickly write that in because people do ask. Waterman Serenity Blue. So not the, you know, it's not a particularly exciting ink and not the wettest ink. And you can see there that the pen does actually write fairly wetly with it. So let's talk pros and cons. So to start with the cons, firstly price, let's talk about what this actually costs. The MSRP of this pen is 195 US. Now you can get it at sale price uh, for 156. Now that for me, puts it just under the Lamy 2000 in terms of price. But Lamy 2000 is a gold nib. This is a Schmidt steel nib. 
uh, and that, you know, does put it on the pricier end of what this pen is. It's, you know, an anodized aluminium body, Schmidt nib converter. It's on the pricier end, for, in my opinion. Now, Estabrook have done something a little interesting. The first pen they released, the SD, had a steel Yovo nib. These have a steel Schmidt nib. Now, for me, that is a step backwards. Schmidt nibs are perfectly fine and reliable, but Yovo nibs have a certain smoothness to them and a certain uh, evenness and consistency that I don't think Schmidt necessarily get in their nibs. So for me, that is a bit of a step backwards uh, in terms of what actually comes on the pen. Not to say you couldn't customize this by putting other nibs on it, but in terms of what comes on it, it is a step backwards and not a particularly huge dip in price. The other issue I have with this is the balance of the pen posted. Um, it is clearly designed to be posted, um, but that the length of that pen and the weight of the cap there actually is quite noticeable. So for me, I write with this unposted, which actually is a pro in a way because actually the feel and the size in the hand like this is really nice. Uh, it's light enough. It's you know it does it writes you know smoothly and consistently without having to sort of worry at all. You know, it is very smooth. Like there is a slight feedback on it, but it is quite a smooth uh, nib. So I'm not sort of complaining necessarily, but it does. You know. It does what it has to do and what it needs to do. Um, and you know, the writing is reliable. If not interesting, it is reliable. So do I think this is a great pen? I think this is a good pen, and I think this is a uh, certainly a pen that if you're wanting something a little bit larger, uh, strong and robust, because the build quality is great, like it is a strong, robust pen, and this is something uh, you should look at. It's fairly reliable, make, as I said, would make a really great everyday writer. So this is the Estabrook Camden, a really interesting uh, pen, as I said, uh, from a brand that is just really re-establishing themselves uh, with new distributors and uh, new owners and all of that. So um, check it out, go have a look at it online, try one out in person, uh, and uh, get behind this company because they can only do better and bigger things in the future. Uh, they've started strong, let's uh, make sure they have the opportunity to really become uh, something that uh, the original brand, uh, Richard Estabrook, would have been proud of. Hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here, uh, or drop me an email which is also listed down below. If there are products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel, uh, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you later.